All right, they got us. They tricked us, right? So who else, Ra raise your hands, raise your hands. If uh, early on in your guitar playing journey, you would hear these big runs that all these legends, Paige, Eddie, all these guys were doing on their guitar, and you're like, wow, I'll never be able to play that because that was certainly me, and I ran into the, <laughs> my guitar falling over. I ran into this a lot with students throughout the years who just would think that they could not play whatever these runs were, and I told them it's actually way easier than what you think. What they're doing is called sequencing their scale. And they'd be like, what's that? I'm like, it's one of the coolest things you'll ever learn on guitar because it really just completely changed everything for me when I learned this. And that's what we're talking about today. So drum roll, because what you are about to watch is from my new guitar course, which is called Rock Guitar Essential Sequences. It is all based around this. If you get anything out of this lesson, you will love the entire course. There's 10 of these examples. You got backing tracks, we talk about changing keys, all kinds of stuff. I've put a lot of work into this one. And I was like, you know, what was one of the big things that I learned on guitar that was just truly like monumental, like a game changing thing? It was when I started doing all these sequencing ideas, I'm like, I gotta do a course about that. So if you guys have ever gotten anything out of my lessons and you wanna support the channel, you wanna add some of that sequencing flair into your own playing, 50% off this week is the price that we're rolling with. So if you wanna get it at that deal, it's linked down below. And uh, yo, let's, let's quit talking and get into the lesson. All right, so let's dive into ascending sequence. See how many times I'm gonna mess up saying that. Number one, now this one's really cool because it's kind of that Ace Frehley love gun vibe to it. This is one that just works in so many situations. Rhythmically, it makes a lot of sense. The note grouping is very easy to get under your fingers. We are doing it over box number five of your E minor pentatonic scale. But just like I said in the overview, I really want you to take these and transpose them into your other keys. So take the sequence, the pattern of notes that we're playing, move it to box one, move it to box four. You can play these anywhere. That's what makes these so powerful is that once you get the pattern on your hand, you just kind of like superimpose it over the next box or scale shape and uh, you're pretty much good to go. So this one were nice and slow, would go like this because you heard it played up to speed over the backing track. <laughs> Now, I do wanna you know, kinda like throw this out there that it doesn't matter how fast you're playing these. I know I, in the backing track, I play some of these a little bit quick, you know? You don't have to play them that fast. Play them at whatever speed feels natural to you. Don't feel the pressure to play them just as fast as I play them. Or maybe you're playing them twice as fast as me already. Totally cool too. But if I'm playing them faster than what you can, don't let that discourage you. That's just what we're working to. We're gonna get to this speed. That's just a nice tempo that I found that I like to play these licks at. So. Already, like I said, box five, E minor pentatonic, sequence number one. And let's just get the first shape of this down. You're gonna go 12 on the low E string to 10 on the low E string. Then you're gonna go back to 12. Then you're gonna go to 10 on the A. Back to 12 on the low E string. And then 10 on the A again. Now that is the first, well actually it's the only sequence that we need in this entire thing. We're just going to be moving it across the strings horizontally. Now, one thing you wanna pay attention to here is the way you start the lick off. Now, I am picking everything. You can add hammer-ons and pull-offs in here if you want to. You can add a lot of palm muting. I like the really palm muted, aggressive sound of picking every note with that nice deep palm mute on there. Now, what I'm talking about is how you're starting it is the way that you are starting your first note. If you're gonna pick everything like me and you start with this down pick, look what happens. Down, up, down, up, down, up. We're doing what's called outside picking. We are picking on the outside of those two strings. If you start with an up pick, you end up going down, up, down. What's called inside picking. Notice how it won that little sequence there. I'm on the inside of the string. So what I want you to do is experiment and find what one feels the most comfortable for you and let that kind of be home base for you. Now, once you get good at it, flip it around the other way. You want to be good at inside and outside picking because sometimes you're going to run into these licks and sequences, whatever it is, that are going to require you to start with an up instead of a down and you want to be well, just very well versed in all of that. So 
The down pick is the one that sounds that sounds best, but feels best to me with that outside picking in there, but I have practiced it both ways. Now, you've got that sequence. And you should be able to just do one and repeat it over and over again with no mistakes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move everything down a string. So just kind of like in your mind, visualize what box number five looks like. And we're gonna move from the low E in the A string down to the A and the D. So we're gonna go 12, 10, 12 on the A string this time. Now we have to kind of stretch back here because we have to follow the scale. So we're gonna go to nine on the D, back to 12 on the A, and then nine on the D. So you've got right there. Now notice how, again, if you think about how box number five looks, that's why we went back to that nine because we are simply following the scale, but we are using the same sequence. So that's all you have to do. If you can get this one under your fingers, you can move it all over the place like that without even thinking about it, I guarantee it. So we've got those first two. And my picking is staying the same. Every new sequence for me is starting on that down pick. If you're starting on an up pick, every new sequence should be starting on an up pick. If you're alternate picking, like we are, you, you know, again, you might be doing hammer-ons, pull-offs, whatever it is, that's totally fine. But for picking uh, sake, you know, it keeps it all very consistent. So the next one, we have to jump down another set of strings. So we're going from the A and the D down to the D and the G. Now you're gonna go 12, 9, 12 on the D. And I'm kind of stretching. I use my ring finger and index finger for all of this because sometimes switching fingers, even though it's a little bit more of a stretch, it, you, my fingers get like tied up with each other. So if I can, if I can avoid changing fingers sometimes, I will. You know, if you need to switch to your pinky here, by all means do it. You know, this is just what works best for me and my hands. So again, you've got 12, 9, 12 on the D. Then you're gonna go to nine on the G, back to 12 on the D, back to nine on the G. Now, one thing you should kind of like mentally be taking note when you're doing these things, or just playing in general, where are your root notes at? Because this is a root note here, so if we wanted to end this sequence and, re and resolve it very nicely, we could end right there on an E note. So it's, it's not necessarily like part of the sequence lesson that I'm trying to teach, but I, I still want it to be aware. Like it's a concept that is important that I try to be very aware of where my root notes are at all times in these sequences. Because when you jump to the turning a sequence into a lick section, you really gotta know that stuff. So just now, just like I said, just think about it. E note, E note, and we've got another E note coming up here. Now, hopping down to the G and the B, you're gonna notice another shift here. We're gonna go 12, 9, 12 on the G. Then you shift back up to 10th fret on the B. And then 12 on the G, and then back to uh, 10. Why did we do that? Because we're following the scale. Our sequence has not changed, but the scale, the notes that are you know actually on the fretboard are going to change, and we just have to adapt to it. The next one, you're gonna go 12, 10, 12 on the B, 10 on the high E string, and then back to 12, and then 10 again on the high E string, and then let's resolve it to an E note, 12th fret on the high E string. Now there was E note, E note, E note. You have three different E notes you could work with out of box number five. So all together again, slow. Now, one thing I wanna to toss in here for you is that you want them all to flow. You notice how there was no hesitation when I switched from one string to the next. That's a huge goal to have in your playing. You don't wanna be going like this. I guess rhythmically that's something that, you know, a song could call for, but for this exercise, I want you to get to where it's just one fluid motion. with no hesitation, because you can always add pause if you want to. Sometimes it's hard to take those pauses away. So 
So that's example number one. Sit there, have fun with that one. Let's get on to number two. Alrighty guys, thank you all so much. Hopefully, if you watch this, it demystifies a little bit. You know, all those legends that were playing those big licks, you know, they're just like, oh, it's just sequencing the scale. So you've got it. So if you get a chance, check out the course. It's linked down below, like I said before, 50% off this opening week. And uh, yo, I'm gonna bounce out of here. Thank you all, as always, and have a great weekend. Bye, guys. Woo! End it bluesy, unplugged, Cronus style. That's how we do it. Ah.